Hello viewers, it's Meghul Sum Ahmed. Today I'm here with the topic market. This is the topic of microeconomics. Now what is market? Market is a place where buyers and sellers meet. Yes, buyers go there to buy the products and sellers go there to sell the products. Um, let's assume that we want to buy a pair of shoes, we want a laptop, we want an air conditioner for our room, we plan to upgrade our cell phone and we want to fly home from some uh, visit and from some place. So what we'll do we will do we will go to the places where we could uh, buy the tickets we'll go to the place where we could buy the shoes we could do go the place where we could buy air conditioner and those places where we go for buying are known as markets now market is a place where we could uh, we could do trade an exchange of physical uh, items or virtual uh, it could be a virtual location for example we uh, do e-commerce uh, we go uh, for e, uh, e online shopping so that will be the part of e-commerce and that is also market now equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity uh, we we have prices like five four three two one and we have quantity demands as you know there is negative relationship of price with quantity demand so as the price will fall uh, so the demand will increase so demand will go 10 20 30 40 and 50 and uh, we uh, we have uh, uh, positive relationship of price with quantity supply so when the price will be decreasing quantity supply will also be decreasing so when quantity uh, when the price was 5 4 3 2 1 so quantity supply will be 50 40 30 20 to 10 so it is also falling now let's uh, just uh, now we have market clearance price that is price is 3 at 3 quantity demand is 30 and quantity supply is 30 means there are 30 buyers and 30 sellers for the product so what will happen we will get an equilibrium so this is going to be known as equilibrium price and quantity demand so equilibrium occurs at price of 3 and the, where the quantities available are 30 and uh, we do have equilibrium in both of them now let's draw it uh, uh, into diagram uh, we uh, do have on uh, uh, horizontal axis we are going to have quantity and uh, on vertical axis we are going to have price so these are the forces of demand and supply unless we have the, these two forces we cannot have a market so uh, at 3 30 quantities are available for sale so 3 is going to be the equilibrium price and 30 is going to be the equilibrium quantity and we do get a equilibrium over here so this is the ideal place uh, if we are going to increase the price it will have disequilibrium in the market and if we want to decrease the price it will also cause disequilibrium in the market so ideal place is when we are in equilibrium whoever wants to buy should buy the product whoever wants to sell should sell the products so units should be cleared in the market this is why it is known as market clearance price let's uh, over here let's see how we handle surplus and shortage so what are surplus and shortages we have price over here 15 10 to 5 and we have quantities uh, supply that is 150 150 and we have quantity demand that is 50 100 and 150 so on x-axis we have taken quantity demand and on y-axis we have taken prices and uh, from this, di uh, uh, the, from this uh, uh, diagram you can understand that at when the price was 10, 100 items were available for sale and 100, 100 uh, items were available for buying. Like buyers wants to buy 100 and seller wants to sell 100. So 100 is going to be the ideal situation and 10 is going to be the ideal price. Now these are known as equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity. So let's uh, see what is happening above the line. So above the equilibrium we have surplus. At surplus we have 15 price. The price is so high so more of the people wants to sell their products because they are encouraged. There is positive relationship of price with quantity supply. So at 15, 150 products are available for sale but the price is so high so demand will not increase. The demand will rather decrease. If it was 100 it will go to 50. So what will happen? 150 items are available for sale but 50 uh, uh, items are uh, uh, people want to buy so what will happen there is a difference of 100 in, in these two so what will happen 
because the price is high so people are not willing to buy and supplier will see their products are unsold so what will they do they will decrease the price so price will fall to 10 and it will become market clearance price uh, similarly uh, let's see uh, what what is happening below the point below the equilibrium here we have shortage at shortage uh, 150 items are available uh, people are willing to buy 150 items because the prices are too low they would feel encouraged and they would move uh, forward to buy the products but at this less price there are less people available for sale they would say no we don't need to sell our product rather we will uh, keep it uh, with, with the help of the products with us so that we could uh, wait for the time when the prices will go up and then we will be selling our products so what will happen when people are there in the market to buy but the uh, products are not available what will happen the rest of the people who want to increase uh, who want to um, quench their need what will they do they would uh, start offering the higher prices so that they could prod buy the product on black so this thing will push the prices towards up and it will uh, move towards the equilibrium price so what will happen will reach to the ideal place that is 10 and we will be having 100 uh, quantities available for sale and buy so uh, the bottom line is price is an automatic regulator that tends to keep production and consumption in line so price is the main thing uh, if the price will move up definitely uh, the buyers will be discouraged and suppliers will be encouraged and if price will be moving down the buyers will be encouraged but supplier will be discouraged so uh, so definitely uh, the it automatically it will move to the ideal location that is equilibrium price so we have surplus surplus is a condition when more of the quantity supply is available and uh, for the sale but people are not willing to buy and shortage is a place where more of the people want to buy but the product is not available in the market to quench their need so these two are the uh, not ideal locations now we have market types like we have goods market we have money market we have labor market and we have capital market so these four are the markets which are uh, they're available in the markets now what is goods market goods market is a place where we go to buy the products that we want to buy physically we want to buy we want to buy apples we want to buy new shoes and uh, if we want to go uh, for our haircut we want to buy we want to uh, take some lessons we want to um, uh, take some coaching classes for maybe we want to learn how to play tennis we will go there and learn this thing so all these are known as the markets goods market goods market because we are buying the products in our hand for example memory chips and auto parts and we are taking the services of hair cutter and doctor and beautician we are we are actually dealing in the goods market so this all scenario is known as goods market then comes money market now money market is where we talk about money we talk about short term and long term financial dealings that we do so money market is where uh, like um, uh, it is a place uh, for example we have japanese yen so this is money market we have we want to buy financial securities like yahoo stock this is also money market so uh, the money market is a component of the financial markets for assets available in short term borrowing and long term borrowing and uh, lending with the original maturities of one year or more than that so these all are uh, the parts of money market so treasury bills commercial papers bankers acceptances these all are the money markets so uh, this is all about the money market now uh, let's talk about the labor market so labor are actually inputs we use these inputs to get output so labor uh, in labor market all the uh, uh, producers uh, they when they use this input they would definitely offer them wages and and uh, higher the wages will be uh, the labor supply, uh, labor are going to offer their less of the services so this is why labor uh, supply curve of labor will first move upward and then will reach to a maximum level and then will move bend backward. Uh, 
because a time comes when a person feels that no this uh, this is too much that i'm getting out of my salary so i don't need to go for part time job so on x axis we have taken hours that our labor is going to offer for services and on y axis we have taken wages so higher the wages is lesser will be the hours that he will be offering for the services rather he would would go for layer activity he would go for outing with his family he would spend time for his own um, uh, for his own uh, layer and his own contentment so rather he might stay home and take a rest so this all is happening in labor market so uh, who are the ones who ask for the labor they are the producers they are the uh, manufacturers and they are the ones who use this input for their uh, for who hire their services for their production so uh, the labor are the ones who are offering their services so they are offering their hours for work so uh, and this is all about and here uh, is the role of government also government is going to uh, uh, determine the minimum wages for the labor so that uh, no uh, capitalist could uh, exploit the uh, needs are uh, the uh, exploit the labor in terms that if they are going to offer them less wages and the labor is just forced to work no they are not supposed to exploit any labor rather government is going to fix the wages and everyone will have to at least pay that wage to the lower staff to the ones who are deprived ones so the government is going to uh, put a wage for them that is going to fix a wage for them and this all uh, these all things are happening in labor market now what is stock market stock market is a place where uh, uh where buyers and sellers meet and where an auctioneer or a broker helps to determine the prices example of this type of market are known as new york stock exchange the input factor market in which households supply their savings for interest or claim for to for future profits uh, to firms uh, that demand funds to buy capital goods so uh, people are uh, when people are staying at their home they just want uh, that their idle money should be used for investment so they cannot open up a new factory and would uh, earn from there rather what they would do they would invest their money in stock market and a broker is there to help him buy the share and uh, when we are going to buy the share we will be getting annual dividend on that share that dividend is going to be the profit for a investor so stock market is a place where all the public limited companies they their shares are sold and their shares are bought so there are buyers are also available and sellers are also available and th that money is uh, uh, been used by the uh, those uh, public limited companies and those public limited companies will make uh, more and more out of that money so they are also in benefit and the investor is also in benefit and uh, stock markets will show us the health of economy like if stock market is moving for um, or moving forward and it is going up it means more and more companies are making more and more profit and investors confidence is very good and they just they are making abnormal profits so this is showing the level of relaxation that the business market has so stock markets are where shares are bought and shares are sold so this was all about my today's lesson. If you like my video, please like, share and subscribe my channel. Thank you.